Hi everyone. In this video, I will be providing a demonstration of zero inflated Poisson and zero inflated negative binomial regression using SPSS. Now, before I get started, I do want to mention a couple of things. First off, in order to follow the video, you're going to need to have installed um, the SPSS extension for carrying out uh, for analyses uh, using zero inflated count models. So um, I've already put together another video on how to uh, download and install uh, that particular extension, and I'll include a link to that underneath the video description uh, in case you want to do that first before proceeding with this particular video. Second, underneath the uh, video description, I'm also going to incorporate a link to the SPSS data file that I'll be working from, so you can download a copy of the data to follow along. And then uh, thirdly, I'm going to include a link to uh, a PowerPoint that's going to provide some additional details that you might find useful. So let's go ahead and consider our example before running our analyses. The example is actually based on a presentation uh, provided in the STATA manual covering zero inflated Poisson regression models. So in this particular discussion, we're going to start out with the zero inflated Poisson model and then move on to the zero inflated negative binomial model. I am going to mention that we're going to spend mo most of our time um, interpreting the zero inflated Poisson model because uh, basically when it comes to the zero inflated negative binomial model, um, we're following the same general uh, procedures and logic when it comes to uh, interpretation in that context. So there's not really going to be a whole lot more to offer uh, in terms of interpretation uh, with that. So I'll leave that to you um, uh, following our description of the Poisson model. So for our research scenario, we're going to be predicting the number of fish a visitor caught at a national park on a particular day as a function of whether the visitor used live bait and the number of persons accompanying the visitor to the park, with the number of persons being both children and adults. So recognizing that some visitors may not have the opportunity to fish for various reasons, while others may fish but fail to catch any for various reasons, we would expect an inflation in the number of zeros observed in the data. So for our analysis, we will be including an indicator of whether a the visitor used live bait and an indicator of how many people accompanied the visitor to the park as predictors of the number of fish caught. So the live bait indicator or live bait variable uh, that we're going to be including is coded zero for no, one for yes. And then uh, the person's variable reflects how many uh, people accompanied the visitor uh, to the park. We're also going to incorporate uh, two predictors that uh, may help to explain why a person would not have had the opportunity to catch a fish. These include whether a person was camping uh, and the number of children accompanying the person to the park. So the camping variable is coded zero for no and one for yes. And then the child variable reflects the number of children accompanying uh, the visitor. So we're going to use that as a predictor of those two variables as predictors of any possible zero inflation. So um, at any rate, let's go ahead and open up SPSS and uh, run our uh, first uh, zero inflated Poisson regression model. Okay, so here's our data set. Our dependent variable is going to be this count variable right here. And our uh, main two uh, predictors of the count uh, is going to be live bait and uh, the person's variable right here. The camper variable and the child variable are going to be used to predict the zero inflation. So in order to carry out our analysis, we're going to go to analyze, go down to generalized linear models. Now, if we just went over to generalized linear models right here, that's where we would actually carry out a straightforward uh, or standard Poisson or negative binomial regression. But uh, because we've added the extension, this is the option that we are going to select, zero inflated count models. So I'll click on that and we'll begin by moving the count variable over to the dependent variable box and we'll move the two predictors of the count over to the top box uh, for count model predictors. So we'll move live bait and persons over to this box right here. Now down below it says zero model predictors and it says omit to use uh, the count variables. So in other words, 
by default, what's going to happen is, is that if, if I don't bother putting anything down here in this box uh, that you see right there, and I leave this checked off, then basically the same two predictors that are included above are going to be used down here uh, in specifying the model. Now, if I want to use different uh, a different set of predictors uh, from the uh, candidate set of variables. And what I'll have to do is to uncheck that box uh, that says uh, use count models, which I'm going to do right here. And I'm going to move those other two variables over. So those are the uh, the uh, camper variables and uh, child variables. So those are our two uh, variables modeling um, are using those as predictors of the zero inflation. So just kind of keep in mind too, that if you check this box right here and you've got different sets of predictors in those, uh, those the count model predictors and zero model predictors boxes, you're gonna get a warning or an error message and it's not gonna run the analysis. So we're gonna have to leave this unchecked in order to proceed. Next, we'll click options, and you'll see you've got the options for Poisson. That's actually the default. You've got an option for negative binomial, and then there's geometric. But we're going to stick with Poisson uh, right now. So we'll click on continue and then on OK. And looking at our output, you'll see there's a um, summary uh, output right here, which generally provides some uh, kind of an overview of fit in a very, in a again, a very general way. One downside of using this particular extension with SPSS uh, is that you're not able to uh, test the fit of your model containing your, your predictors relative to a null model. So you can't really test whether there's a, a significant improvement in fit relative to a null model, uh, like you might be used to in the context of running a Poisson or negative binomial regression using the standard options under the generalized linear models tab. Uh, so that is a downside um, to this particular extension. Um, uh, all I can say is that if you want that type of information, what you'll have to do is to use a different program in order to uh, to obtain it. So one program that you can easily obtain that information when running these uh, analyses is of uh, Stata. So at any rate, uh, we'll go ahead and scroll down a little bit. You'll see that we've got uh, regression coefficients and significance tests for the two components of our uh, zero inflation model. The first component, basically what we're doing is we're modeling uh, the count outcomes. So that's where you've got uh, the count uh, model coefficients that are given down here. And uh, basically these are the regression coefficients and you've got the p-values for each of those two predictor variables. So keep in mind that the uh, regression slopes for those two predictors right here um, are actually representing the predicted uh, um, change in the log count uh, of the number of fish caught per unit increase on a predictor variable. But you can just basically loosely uh, say, you know, given the signs of these um, predictors, both of these are positive, that uh, individuals who use live bait, because that was coded one on the live bait variable, um, ten, were predicted to catch more fish than individuals who did not use live bait, uh, which was coded zero. And then with respect to the person's variable, the positive slope right there is basically indicating that visitors who had more people accompanying them uh, were predicted to uh, catch more fish than uh, individuals who had fewer people accompanying them uh, at the park. So both of these uh, predictors were positive and significant pr uh, predictors of the uh, of our count outcome, basically the number of fish that were caught. Down below, you'll see that we've got a model or a portion of our model reflecting zero inflation model uh, coefficients. So in this particular case, basically what we're uh, attempting to predict is inflation in the number of zeros in our data set. So as we're looking at this, just kind of keep in mind that, you know, we've got the camper variable and child variable. So these are the regression coefficients that are provided right here. So remember that with our camper variable, it was coded zero 
uh, for no camper, I'll just say zero equals no camper, and one equals yes for yes, there was a camper, um, or the, the person was a camper, I should say. Um, so it's either the person was not a camper or was a camper uh, during their visit. So the fact that the regression slope right here is negative, uh, it's a negative 1.016, basically indicates that an individual who was a camper was less is less likely to exhibit zero inflation than a person who was not a camper, based on the coding of our variables right here. So uh, with respect to the child variable, you can see that we have a positive regression slope right there. And basically that's indicating that individuals who had more children accompanying them were uh, were uh, predict predicted to have less opportunity to fish, basically to have zero inflation than individuals with fewer children. So um, both of those uh, predictors, by the way, were statistically significant. So in a nutshell, the zero inflation portion of the model is basically predicting um, you know, whether an individual uh, uh, had or did not have the opportunity uh, to catch a fish in the first place, uh, that's the zero inflation model down below, and then the predictors of that, and then the, the coefficients above in the count portion is basically uh, reflecting uh, the idea that among those people who uh, had the opportunity to fish, what are the predict predictors of the count of fish that were caught? Now you might uh, have you might be interested in uh, having uh, the uh, exponentiated coefficients uh, in order to talk about incidence rate ratios or odds ratios, the incidence rate ratios for the uh, count coefficients, the odds ratios for the zero inflation coefficients. Unfortunately, um, using the extension, you're not going to be able to obtain. Uh, that information like you you could if you go through a standard uh, put, uh, run a standard Poisson or negative binomial regression using the generalized linear models option. However, uh, you can easily calculate those exponentiated coefficients uh, basically in the following way. All you have to do, you can easily use a calculator if you just uh, take E base of natural logarithms and raise it to the power of the regression coefficient for a given predictor, then you can obtain those exponentiated coefficients. So basically just take E raised to the power of 1.757 to obtain an incidence rate ratio for live bait, and then E raised to the power of 0 0.807 to obtain an incidence rate ratio for persons. And Obviously, the same would go with respect to the zero inflation coefficients down below. So I've already created, by the way, uh, an Excel file that you can easily just type that information in and generate them uh, very quickly. Uh, and I'll include a link to that underneath the video, uh, too. So you can see right here, this is my Excel file. You can easily just kind of type in the names of your predictors as well as those coefficients in the yellow boxes. Don't change anything else. Uh, and then basically it's going to calculate those uh, exponentiated coefficients for you. Uh, so the incidence rate uh, ratios for live bait and persons are 5.795 and 2.241 respectively for the zero inflation portion of the model. Uh, for camper and uh, child, the uh, the um, odds ratios basically of being a true zero on the count due to not having the opportunity to fish, uh, those odds ratios are 0.36 and 4.968 respectively. Something else that I want to draw your attention to is that uh, under certain circumstances, you might want to uh, compare the fit of this model relative to a uh, Poisson model where you're not uh, accounting for possible zero inflation. So to do that, all you need to do is to, um, is to uh, uh, essentially calculate or actually you don't have to calculate, sorry about that. All you need to do is to obtain the AIC for those two models. So the AIC for the current zero inflated Poisson regression model is 
Uh, so all we need to do then is to generate the AIC for a standard Poisson regression model. And the preferred model is the one with the lower a AIC. So to show you that in action, I'll just go ahead and go to analyze, generalized linear models. We'll go there and kind of reset this here. Uh, we'll click on Poisson log linear option. For the response, we'll move count variable over to the dependent variable box. For the predictors, we'll select live bait and we'll uh, select the uh, persons variable right here, move those to the covariance box. Under model, we'll select both of these variables and move them over. And then under statistics, we'll click on include exponential parameter estimates if you want the incidence rate ratios for that particular model. Um, that's not really the main focus in this particular example, but I'm so automatic in terms of how I go through and click these things. I just did. So we'll go ahead and click on OK. And you'll see that with respect to the AIC for this model, you'll see uh, down here it says 2630.356. So obviously this AIC value is greater than the AIC value that was associated with the zero inflated Poisson model. So Based on that, the preferred model out of the two would have to be the in zero inflated Poisson model. Okay, so for the last part of this demonstration, I'll just quickly generate the results for a zero inflated negative binomial model. We'll just go back to generalized linear models and click on zero inflated count models. And we'll leave everything else as is, click on the options and then negative binomial, click continue and then on okay. And you can see that we get uh, our set of results for that. Again, the interpretations, the general approach to interpretation of the coefficients and significance tests are going to mirror those that I've gone through with respect to the, Poisson, the zero inflated Poisson model. So there's not really uh, much need to kind of go through that in this particular case. So that's going to wrap up this particular video de demonstration. And I appreciate you watching.